Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to animate the procedural flower. But before we animate the flower, I want to make some changes to our point in the cloning section. So in the previous video, I made a mistake on the points in cloning section. I'm so sorry for that. So in the previous video, we clone our petals on a regular spiral shape. Then we delete one point after another point to get the position we want. So even though it looks fine, but actually, in the real world, the plant isn't going to grow that way unless we are going to make a stylized flower. So in the real world, the plant are actually grow in the phyllotaxis spiral shape. So instead of using a regular spiral to get the point we need, we are supposed to use a phyllotaxis spiral to get the point. So in order to get the phyllotaxis spiral in Blender, we have to follow this formula right here. So first, we have to find out the rotation angle and the radius. Then after we get the rotation angle and radius, we need to calculate the position of the point for X and Y axis. So let's go to Blender, select the flower in the Geometry Node Editor, go to Cloning section, add the joint geometry after the set material. Let's move all of this beside so we have more space. And then delete everything in the cloning section. Then I think we can disconnect the set material and put it beside for now. Okay, now add a curve line and connect it to the joint geometry. So our curve line is here, this one. Then add a resample curve. I want to add more points to the curve line. Then add a set position because we want to manipulate the point. Okay, then refer to the formula. First, we need to find out the rotation angle. The rotation angle is equal to point number multiply 137.5. So the point number mentioned here is the point number of the curve line we added just now. And 137.5 is actually a golden angle to form a phyllotaxis spiral. So in the geometry node editor, let's add an index node to get the point number of the curve line. Then add a math node. Change the function to multiply. Connect the index to multiply. Then we need to multiply the 137.5. So duplicate the math node. Change the function to radian. Tap 137.5. Connect it to multiply. So now this is the result for the rotation angle. Select the node, press F2, and name it Result of Rotation Angle. Okay, next, we need to calculate the radius. So the radius is equal to point number multiply value. So this is our point number, this one, our point number. So the value here is a scaling parameter. We can put any value for this, depends on the size we want. So add a value node. Duplicate this math node. Then we need to take the value to multiply the index, which is the point number. Okay, now this is the result for radius. Again, select the node, press F2 and rename it result of radius. So after we get the rotation angle and radius, we can continue to another formula here. X equal to cosine of rotation angle multiply radius and Y equal to sine of rotation angle multiply radius. So this is pretty simple, we just need to follow it. Let's start from the calculation for x-axis. So in the geometry node editor, add a math node. Change the function to multiply. Then take the result of the radius here and connect it to the multiply. Then duplicate the math node. Change this to cosine. Then take the result of rotation angle and connect it to the cosine. Then connect the cosine to this multiply. Then we need to output this result to the x-axis position. So let's add a combine xyz. Connect the multiply to the x-axis. Then connect the combine xyz to the set position. Then increase the value here so we can see the result. Put 0.6 maybe. So currently it's a straight line. Okay, now let's continue to calculate the y-axis. 
So the y-axis is y equal to sine of rotation angle multiply radius. So duplicate both of this math node, change this to sine, then take the result of the radius and connect it to multiply, then take the result of the rotation angle and connect it to sine, then I'll put this result to y-axis and now it is too big. Let's reduce the value here to 0 0.08. And the sample count increased to 19. We can still play around with this value later after we clone the pattern onto it. Okay, now we can start to clone our pattern. So let's go to set position. Then add instant on point node after the set position. Then go to the wrinkles section. Grab the set position for displacement map and connect it to the instant on point. Okay, now I want to rotate the pattern and make it facing outside like what we did in the previous video. So to do it, let's add a rotate instant. Put it after the instant on point. Then add a line Euler to vector. Change the pivot to Z axis. Connect it to the rotate instant. Then add a position node. Connect it to the vector. Okay, then duplicate this rotate instance. Put 40 degree for the Y axis. Then I want to turn the pattern transform from big to small, follow the point. So let's add a curve parameter and connect it to the scale in instant on point node. Then add a float curve. Okay, then we can start adjust the pattern size. Okay, then go back to the value, decrease the value to 0 0.03, and then resample count to 38 maybe. You can experiment with this value yourself. So this value is the scale of the point, and this resample curve is the amount of pattern. Okay, next, I want to move the petals here in the center slightly higher so that it won't overlap together. So to do it, let's go to the set position, this one. Duplicate the set position and put it after the rotate instance before the joint geometry. Then add a position node. Connect it to the position. Add a vector map node. Duplicate the vector map node. Change the operation to length. Then add them together. Duplicate the vector map again. Change the operation to multiply. Put it here. And now we can start to adjust the z-axis. Okay, then add the transform node after the set position. Move it higher, make it smaller. Okay, then we done it. Let's put back the material, put it before the joint geometry. And now we have done the cloning. Let's select everything here. Press Ctrl J to frame it. Press F2 and name it clone. Okay, then I think we can make the pollen smaller. Let's go to the pollen section. This one. So reduce the radius of this UV sphere. Put 0.8 maybe. Okay, now we can start animate it. So go to the curve line for better section. This one. Add a mix RGB after the float curve. Then select the float curve. Press Ctrl Shift D to duplicate it. Then connect it to the mix RGB. 
And now we can reset the curve. Select the curve here, press F2 and rename this before bloom. Then select this float curve, press F2 and rename it after bloom. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set two different shapes for the petal. So one of the shape here is the shape after the flower bloom and another here will be the shape before bloom. Then we can adjust the factor here to transform it. So let's start to adjust the shape for before bloom. Adjust the factor to 1 to see the result. Okay then let's add a group input. Connect the factor to the group input. In the geometry node editor, press N to toggle the side panel. Go to group, select the fact and rename it blooming animation. Actually, you can put whatever name you like. It doesn't matter at all. Okay, then press N again to hide the panel. Then next, let's go to the pattern modeling section. Then we need to repeat the same step. Add a mix RGB after the float curve. Then duplicate the float curve. Connect it to the mix RGB. Slide the factor to 1. Reset the curve. And drag the shape we want. And now select this float curve, press F2 and rename it before bloom. And this one after bloom. Then again add a group input. Connect the factor to the blooming animation. Okay then go to the clone section here. And now I want to rotate the pattern. So go to the rotate instance. This one with the Y axis 40 degree one. Let's move it higher so we have more space. To rotate the Y axis, let's add a combine XYZ, connect it to the rotation, then add a mix RGB, connect it to the Y axis, add a value, duplicate it, connect both of them to the mix RGB, adjust the factor to 0, put 0.7 for this value, press F2 and name it after, press F2 name this before then adjust the factor to 1 put minus 0.4 for this value so this before this after then again add a group input connect the factor to the blooming animation okay then i want to make the size of the receptacle slightly longer and make the radius smaller so go to the receptacle section Here, go to the curve line and increase the end of the z-axis to 1.2 and the radius of the curve circle reduced to 0.8. Okay then, I want to add a mix RGB to the pollen as well. Let's go to the pollen section. Here, go to the UV sphere, this one, add a mix RGB. Then add a value node. Duplicate it, connect them together, then name this after, name this before, drag the factor to 1 and put 0.4 for this, then put 0.8 for after. Okay again, add a group input, connect the factor to the blooming animation. Okay next, I want to make the petal thinner, now it is too thick, let's go to the wrinkles section. This one, add a mix RGB, put it after the float curve, duplicate the float curve, connect it to the mix RGB, slide the factor to 1, then adjust the graph below. Slide the factor to 0, then adjust this graph as well, make it thinner. Then rename this after, rename this before, again add a group input, connect the blooming animation to factor. Okay next, I want to transform the petal from small to big. So let's go back to the clone section. 
go to the instant on point node this one let's move all of this higher so we have more space then at a scale instant put it after the instant on point and then duplicate all this node connect the mix rgb to the scale instance then put one for the after put 0.6 for the before then again duplicate all this node press alternate p to unframe it go to the zipper section go to the instant on point node here add a scale instant after the instant on point then connect the mix rgb to the scale okay then go to the modifier properties and now we can adjust this value to animate the flower okay now we can start keyframe it let's go to the timeline move the thumb indicator back to zero then i want to start the frame on zero and end the frame at 150 adjust this value to one right click and insert keyframe move the thumb indicator to 60 adjust this value to zero right click and insert keyframe again okay then go to the graph editor press a to select all keyframe press numpad dot to focus it then we can adjust the handle so now i want to delay the starting time of the animation for the curve line for better and i want the animation to end earlier before 60 frame so to do it go back to the geometry node editor go to the curve line for better section here let's add a math node Put it after the group input change the function to multiply then multiply 4 you can experiment with different value to get a different delay time then go to the timeline again play the animation to check the result okay everything looks good for me then duplicate this math node go to pollen section press alternate p to unframe it i want to delay the animation for pollen as well So add the math node here after the group input. Then check the animation again. Okay, then I think we can add a little bit movement to the flower so that it will look natural. In the geometry node editor, go to group output, add a transform node, put 7.5 for the G axis translation, then in the 3D viewport, press N. To toggle the transform panel then put minus 7.5 for the translation z axis okay now i want to rotate the flower so in the timeline press this button to jump to the first frame right click the rotation x and add a single keyframe then drag the time indicator to 70 put minus 4 for the rotation x then right click again and add a single keyframe then now press this button to go to the last frame put minus 1 right click and add a single keyframe then press spacebar to check the animation okay now we done it so if you like my video please subscribe and see you in the next video bye